Well, hello again, and welcome again to another uh, broadcast from the Internet Radio, and the name of our show is Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Risch. Now, I don't know if you listened to my last uh, uh, broadcast, but I had mentioned what I was going to be doing next. And what we're going to be looking at today is a short article that was written by Samuel Ridout, and it was on the promises to the overcomer. Now, it may serve to us to dwell briefly on the various promises to the overcomer that's found in Revelation 2 and 3, when the letters were written to the churches and they were indicated by circumstances and responsibilities to the church in view of the coming day. And that day is the day of the Lord. It's coming soon. As we uh, think about his coming, let's think about these promises to the overcomer. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is the letter that was written to Ephesus. And it says, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life in the midst of the paradise of God. And that's found in Revelation 2, verse 7. You know, this is a precious promise. Wherever there is overcoming in the day of the coldness and the apathy, uh, may we not say, in these very days, these very days that we're living in right now, in which we live, well, Christ is the tree of life, and there can be no higher reward than to partake of his fullness in the house of God. And this is the prize awaiting all who have a fire and a first love, you know, when you think about our first love is Christ and present health fair, uh, health felt appreciation in his preciousness in this life. So then we move on to the second, uh, the letter that was written to uh, Smyrna. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. Find that in Revelation 2.10. Here are words of cheer for those who endure hardness and for his sake and who bear reproach, scorn, suffering uh, in the path of obedience. Here still in the closing days is an opportunity to suffer for the truth, and for him who is the truth, our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, work it for us a far more excellent and eternal weight of glory. Just look at Second Corinthians 4.17. That's exactly what it says. And then third, the letter to Pergamos. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth save he that receiveth. Revelation 2.17 What a promise to those who resist settling down at home where our Lord was rejected. Are we feeding now and here on the manna, God's perfect provision for a wilderness path, for those who turn away from the dainties of the earthly pleasures of worldly comfort and be conformed to this world? There is a feast and a white stone in the home that is prepared. 
Well, you know, you think about the manna in the wilderness. And after a time, I mean, it was something wonderful that God had did. And the people appreciated it at first. But later on, after a while, they started despising this manna. And they wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back into the world and eat the things that were in the world. You know, the onions and the leeches and and, and all the, the spicy foods. Because this manna was pure food from heaven that God had given them. It's like we feeding on the word of God. Don't ever uh, want to go back and uh, read uh, earthly things and feed on earthly things. Television uh, is one of them. Uh, all the things that are in the world. Uh, it, the Bible says, he that loveth the word is not a lover of God. You can't love the world and love God. Well, the fourth one is Thyara. Thyara, Ira. <laughs> Got trouble pronouncing that one. He that overcometh and keepeth my work unto the end, to him will I give the power over the nations, and I will give him the morning star. Revelation 2, verses 26 through 28. In Thyarara, we see the church established as a, a worldly power and in place here instead of where the Lord is. There are earthly or, or worldly churches. As we look about us today, we can see the same spirit working, corruption following in spite of the various activities and the faithfulness on the part of some. So the overcomer, the morning star of hope, shed its holy light in the heart and the uh, coming of the Lord is nigh. It's so close, my brothers and sisters. And then we got Sardis. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Revelation 3, 5. You can see these are the words of the Lord. Sardis, with its boastful light, had but a name to live cold, lifeless, formless, and even doctoral uh, accuracy cannot take the place of a living heart and affection and devotedness to Christ. How cheering to the overcomer is this promise with thee in garments white, Lord Jesus, we shall walk and spotless in the heavenly light of all thy suffering talk. Well, we come to number six, the Church of Philadelphia. Here that here that overcomer will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. I will write upon him my new name, Revelation 3.12. The true Philadelphians will not think lightly of any part of the word, much less of that which has to do with the nature of the church, its government, ministry, and testimony. Are we sharing in his uh, patience not looking for great things here, but holding fast what he has given. What will it be to be a pillar in the temple of God? And then the last, uh, number seven, which is uh, Laodicea. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit 
with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Revelation 3, verse 21. May the Lord make us true Philadelphians. This is a great uh, thing to be. And keep us from approaching the pride of self-satisfaction of poor, wretched, blind Laodiceans. Difficulties may increase. Nothing can stand the test but what is of God. Our whole resource must be Christ and Christ alone. Well, may there be a true revival ere he comes, not necessarily in numbers, but in souls in true heartedness and devotion to him who gave us all in all. Well, the blessed promises given in these uh, churches, as we see, is just a hint of the holy joy that awaits the overcomer in these evil days. May we ponder them and live in the expectation of soon entering that bright home. Let us individually and uh, unitedly pray for the church which he has purchased with his own blood.